Okay, hello everyone. Welcome again and thank you for joining our demo event on Consulting in a Box. My name is Jeroen and I'm with Quint and I will be your host during this session. Um, let's take a look at the agenda for the coming 30 minutes. Um, we do a short recap on Consulting in a Box. Maybe some of you joined our launch webinar two weeks ago. And then the main topic of this webinar is to do somewhat of a deep dive in the Consulting in a Box uh, tool itself. And uh, we have um, a nice demo for you that shows you all the possibilities and capabilities of consulting in a box. Then we uh, explain to you a little bit about the unique strengths uh, for you to offer consulting in a box to your clients and how you can benefit from it. And as I said before, we will try to close by uh, answering the questions you may have. Now, a little bit about our organization as far we are new to you. We are an independent management consulting firm established in the Netherlands back in the early 90s. And today we work with 250 consultants in more than uh, 49 countries in the world. We focus on sourcing, architecture, governance, service management, lean IT and DevOps. Quint uh, has three main business lines uh, next to our consulting business line. We have our own academy uh, where we train uh, and use organizations. And we have Quint Solutions uh, that develops and uh, provide other training providers with course materials and other educational services. So this is a little bit uh, about Quint. Um, let's now go to the main subject uh, of this webinar. Um, and I would like to give a word to Frank Frambach who will do a kickoff of uh, the demonstration. Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jeroen, for the introduction, and thank you, everybody, for attending today. As Jeroen said, we would like to look a little bit closer at what Consulting in a Box actually looks like. So for that, we will go into a demo with Jan van der Poel in a moment. And um, before we go there, I would just like to kind of refresh our minds as to uh, what it was we discussed when we launched Consulting in a Box just a little bit over two weeks ago. So it's a very quick recap, and then we will go into the demo. <clears throat> Looking at uh, uh, what we discussed in the presentation uh, when we launched Consulting in a Box and we talked about why did we, did we develop it, what were the things that we saw. Um, we looked at market trends and we saw that there is a lot of pressure on the price of courses. Partners complain that it is very hard uh, to get uh, a reasonable price for a course today because the pressure is strong. But also a lot of complaining about um, the difficulty to differentiate as a training provider because there are a lot of training providers that offer the same courses. Take, for instance, one of the very popular courses in our market today, ITIL Foundation. In any given market, be it uh, the US, the UK, the Netherlands, uh, China, any country, uh, there is a lot of providers that offer the same courses and it's very hard for training providers to differentiate themselves. So we see that the perceived value of training is going down. People don't always get the value out of the course that they want and we see that also organizations um, more and more complain about that the results that they get from people having attended training is not always what they were hoping for. And sometimes it also has to do with the fact that there are candidates in the world only going after the certificate and not really acquiring the knowledge that they should have when they have that certificate and to, to kind of vouch for the quality of the certificate. In the market, uh, a lot of you may know him, Paul Wilkinson from a company called Gaming Works. And Paul, um, Gaming Works supports and promotes business simulation as a part of the learning process. And uh, Paul very often advocates that a lot of people who would go to training don't always learn what they should and don't always retain the knowledge that they should. And the investment, as you can read here, doesn't always come back to the companies as what they had hoped for. And Maybe the most shocking one is the, the, the last one, the third bullet point, that less than 5% of over 15,000 idle attendees who have been interviewed actually know the definitions of things like service, value, outcomes, risk, and so on. So these are all core things that they learn within an idle foundation course, but fewer than 5% actually know this. Why? Simply because the way we learn in a lot of courses, and this is not complaining about the course, but it has to do with the structure and the pressure on the course. And consulting in a box aims at, at taking that to the next level. People forget quite fast, and this is not strange, this is the way it works, this is research, 
that um, even after 20 minutes you've lost 40 percent of what you learned. So that's why when in the three-day Idle Foundation course, for instance, you do the exam directly at the end of the course, the memory is still fresh, the knowledge is still there, but as you can see in this curve, should you do the exam, let's say, a, a month later, chances are that you will not pass because you will have probably lost about 80 percent of the knowledge. So repetition is part of the retention and repetition is also, as we will look into consulting in the box in a moment, is part of consulting in the box because you will be working with what you've learned before. So it becomes a, a continual cycle of improvement, if you may. You learn, then you engage with what you do, you apply your knowledge, and through doing these things you grow and you continually um, go through the circle. Then, if you look at uh, where training ends or doesn't end, you know, generally it is so that if you go to a training, you do your course, uh, three, four, five days, depending on the length of the course, then you do your exam and you go home and it usually ends. Consulting in a Box aims to take it across that border and into the workplace. Like we see in a lot of businesses, there is an apprenticeship, there is the opportunity to be taught as you are working. That is the aim also of Consulting in a Box. A network of peers, and this is something Jan will also show you a little bit later within the tool itself. A network of peers to help you to actually work with what you've learned and apply with what you've learned in your workplace. So you can learn by yourself, but you can also learn by doing together with others. And this can be people within your own organization, but also if you go to an open enrollment course, you, know, you can learn together with people in other organizations, but facing similar uh, obstacles and issues in their organization. And one of the key factors within Consulting the Box is that you can lean on support that will help you to succeed, at least at the candidate. So that's a quick recap and obviously I've gone through it quite quickly. If you would like to see more of it and revisit the, uh, the presentation that we did two and a half weeks ago, um, you can go there, the, the link is out there for the webinar and if you would like it we can always uh, give it to you um, and then you can look at the full presentation of that. But for now I'm going to hand over to Jan who will give you an in-depth look at what it actually looks like and how you can use Consulting in the Box to your advantage. Jan, over to you. Yeah, thank you Frank and indeed it's to your advantage because Consulting in the Box makes this whole learning experience very personal. Um, and how does that happen? Because we have a um, questionnaire which is about uh, uh, the students and the students' work environment and we have all kinds of algorithms that based on the answer profile from the student, um, Consulting in a Box gives a specific advice which is in the dashboard and let's revisit each of these three things. First of all, um, when you are in the Consulting in a Box uh, website consulting in a box com and you click on access then you directly go to the store and in the store you see here uh, four different shelves service management strategy transformation operations um, with all individual uh, questionnaires courses so to say and of course much more of these uh, will be added in the coming months now if you would just browse around, then you could say like, uh, I would like to know a bit more about, let's say, incident and problem management. And I could either go directly uh, to the assessment or I could just inform myself a little bit like, now for whom is this exactly? The topics? Hmm, yeah, interesting. Sources, how long was the effort? 20 minutes, okay, I can do that. Now, who on earth from Quint made this? Let me check. Ah, that's Dragana. Okay, so suddenly I get a feel. If I have a question or whatever, I can ask people immediately because it's you know real life, uh, real human beings, real specialists that made this. So um, yeah, I'm convinced. I want to know more. Um, so I click and I directly get into a questionnaire. And you see here, huh? step one: pick your topic. I just did it. Then answer the questionnaire. That's right here and then I can start improving. Wow, that's very quickly, that's a maybe a 15 minute cycle, so that's really um, um, an immediate payback. So I listen, uh, um, sorry, I read here uh, what's on the introduction, yeah, read, that's fine, and I have to tell something about myself, okay, and I am from Quint, 
and I can enter some things and okay what's my goal with incident and problem management uh, yeah I want to get the best out of it let me check the options yeah that's what I really want to do and yes I want to share knowledge because uh, yeah that's of course the new thing like Frank said I want to exchange with peers I can help them but more importantly they can help me so when we have done this then I can uh, um, uh, click next and what you see here is a slightly different way of asking questions we're not asking for opinions like are you satisfied with the way you do uh, your incident KPIs because I might be satisfied but I might still be screwing up so therefore the answer options are verifiable uh, or asking for verifiable behavior um, verifiable facts and as you can see they improve in quality and yeah this is what I am doing currently and it also asks for my ambition and why is that important because the learning is even more concrete when I during the course I can discuss with my trainer and say like I thought I would improve on A but you suggest me B hmm, why is that interesting hmm. and then you have this accelerated learning so I can um, uh, click what I think I want to improve and let's not go to the entire questionnaire now but you can see um, oh it's 20 minutes this is going rather quick um, if I would be uh, uh, done then um, in this case uh, I would go to the end uh, of the questionnaire um, let's not uh, do that so I want to quickly go back I'm sorry to um, because I already have logged in normally if you need to log in you just have to give your email and uh, um, your password then you have an account um, but then if you're logged in you can see your assessment and as you can see uh, I already started with uh, incident and problem management but earlier today I looked at our approach to COVID algorithms we look at the answer profile we look at the target that I just indicated uh, like with incident and problem management I wanted to get the best out of incident and problem management and all of that is juggled around algorithms applied and then we get to this automated advice which is summarized in a dashboard this is something I did earlier and what you see here are different elements of consulting I see part of analysis I can see a benchmark I can see a profile um, I can see also an action list in terms of what are my priorities yeah, but how do I do this ah I have here a section on improve on how to do it there are even action steps and online references ready for me and I know there are even people who can help me okay so where do I stand what do I have to improve how do I improve it and are there people that who can help me all together on one screen now what you see on the benchmark is um, I can see in gray the bandwidth of what others scored I can see in I can see in green their average and I can see in blue my own average now what we see invariably and we've done over now in total Frank I think in total 65,000 people in the past who have been using this system and what you see in the benchmark is that you always somewhere overscore but you always somewhere underscore and it also triggers immediately attention from students like Ooh, wait a minute governance it's not so well important in my company so oh I'm now a tenth I want to know how can I improve now this is my actual situation but I had improvement ambition and what you can see here is that um, actually um, everyone else is even more ambitious than I am because in my actual situation I was roughly on par but if I had my ambitions uh, let's say as a, as a strong target then over time I would lose out to what others are planning and it's also another way to motivate students and say currently you're doing well but hey uh, you're a moving target as is everyone else so it stimulates uh, students to be attentive and do, to be participative and of course everyone is interested in how they are doing against their peers now this is about numbers eh, your score from 0 to 10 uh, but not everyone is so much into numbers and therefore we have also a sort of a, a qualitative equivalent which is the profile so where the benchmark compares how people are doing in terms of scores against others the profile compares how you are doing in relation to uh, certain criteria in this case we looked at my answer profiles and in terms of COVID 
Did I have a process orientation? Was I more focused on the technology, maybe on governance, or maybe on people? Well, you already saw governance, and indeed, uh, in the benchmark, it scored low. And indeed, as you can see, in the very small green wedge, apparently, in terms of COVID, I'm a technology kind of guy. Nothing wrong, because if you look in the profiles, there are positives and there are things to improve. So rather than saying, okay, I'm just a technology guy, no, I, now I know that I have to stay focused during the course and there are process, governance, and people items uh, being discussed. So if I go back to my dashboard, I have a feeling for where I stand. I'm doing well. I have some parts that are not so scoring well. I know from the benchmark that I maybe have to accelerate a bit further than I thought, and I know that the technology aspects of COVID, it's not my problem, the other things are. Okay, so now the dashboard also suggests, okay Jan, what do you got to improve? Well, there is a list of uh, questionnaires that I have to improve, and unfortunately in my case, partly due to my uh, aggressive target, I have to improve, like you saw on the dashboard, I have to improve 17 out of the 20 questions. Fine. That's good, so I get the maximum out of my course. And what the system does, it already shows the items that I have to improve. It gives a tentative priority and it gives a tentative deadline. I can still edit those, but it already says that, okay, structured approach to communicating, yeah, that's maybe a low priority. Yeah, but if I have a single integrated framework, that's leading, so of course that is of a high priority. So the system, in a way, gives already a shopping list. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to do everything during the course, but it gives a feel for, like, let's walk through all the high items, and the high priority items, and let's stay even more attentive, and let's stay more active in the discussion when this is this uh, uh, discussed during the course. So, going back, I have this uh, situation of where I am in numbers, in words, and I have my shopping list. But the thing is like, yeah, apply a single integrated framework, geez, how do I do that? Well, luckily, if I click on it, then what you see here is that we dive into the improve section of the dashboard. And here you see this single question, and here you see, again, the three answers which uh, move up in quality. And you can see here on the color indications that my actual situation is that I have the worst answer. I plan to go to the medium answer, but given my target, the system says like, eh, that's maybe not good enough, you should go and help for the third answer. Um, and if I don't know exactly, again, why did we have this question, you see an explanation. Yeah? A single overarching grain, uh, governance framework is important because blah, 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 blah. So I have to go from the dark blue to the green, but, but how do I do that? I understand that I have to do it. How do I do it? Well, what you can see here is that um, in consulting in the box, there are um, suggested improvement steps. So here I first better read an introduction to governance frameworks in general. So if I click on it, I immediately go to uh, content, in this case from Quint. It can also be from Harvard Business Review, from others, um, which means that the system is not just an understanding of where you are and what you should do. It's a complete learning system. And um, um, on average, I remember that these questionnaires are roughly 50 to 60 uh, references to outside content, which means that you don't have to uh, search for the content. You probably don't even know exactly what to search for. I never had thought about a governance framework, but now I see this. I thought, oh yeah, sure, governance framework. So the learning starts immediately, and I click and I read. So I am, eh, like Confucius, uh, Frank, I am really active with my topic. And of course, you can see that for all the other questions, there are action steps too. Now, I know that I had to change eh, in the benchmark. I see now what I have to change. I understand why. I can even see how. Gee, I don't want to do it completely by myself. Yes, during the course, I have my colleagues, I have my uh, my trainer, but what about later on? And what you can see is that the system automatically selects people that, uh, first of all, opted in to share knowledge. Yeah, it's an opt-in. If you don't want to share, then nobody can help you either, but uh, yeah, it can be. Yeah. So you have the option. It's not a mandatory thing. But if you opt in to share knowledge, 
then um, just a few of the things where you are good at is shown at others. But when these people call you uh, for help, then very probably those people are on your list as well. So it's reciprocal. So you give and you receive. And you all remember, you all realize that giving is easy. I just explain you what it is. But the aha, okay, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel because you help me. That saves an enormous amount of time. So what you want to do is get immediate traction on the work floor so the sooner you can solve your problems, the better it is. So the last step is like, so how do I get to those people? Well, you see here some uh, some people. There are even people from Quint. Well, yeah, I would like their help. So I click on this and automatically there is a mail prepared that says like, ah, to Nuno, yeah, do you apply? Oh, uh, dear, blah, 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 etc. So you get immediately in contact with the people who can help you as quickly as possible. So in that sense, rounds off the, uh, the demonstration. We had a simple store, we had an even simpler questionnaire, and we have a very complete dashboard that tells where you are in numbers, in words, your shopping list, what you have to improve, and who can help. And all that in 15 minutes. Frank? Excellent. Thank you very much, Jan. That was very clear and very comprehensive. Um, I think we have a much better understanding now, not only of what it is, but also how it works. And I think that that is also very important. And also what kind of content is given back to the user. So thank you very much for the very clear demonstration. Just uh, quickly, as we said, it is the bridge between education and implementation. So a lot of our partners are obviously training providers, and uh, visiting this webinar is very often with people uh, training providers. So what it offers you as a training provider is you can differentiate. As I said in the beginning, we see all these market things happening. We see what uh, the feedback is from people having been on courses and after a while being uh, checked whether they still know and whether they're making progress. Now you can go back to your market and say, okay, our course is great, but now our course is even much better than the rest of the market because we can offer something that nobody else can offer because this is not something that is just on the market for everybody. You can differentiate in the market. You can show that you are now really creating value. For the IT professional, it means that they can become much better at their job. They now can use Consulting in a Box, as Jan demonstrated clearly, to help them to make those improvement steps because yes they learned it in the course and yes they heard about it and they even took the exam and probably passed but that doesn't mean that they also know how to apply it and by answering the questions doing the assessment and then getting the direct hands-on approach they now know where to go and for the business of which they're in the end part of and it, let's say at the end of the day pays for the course that they went on and their salary at the end of the month they help their business become stronger and more competitive in the market because business and IT have become so close to each other that IT is the business. So for our partners, this is the change that you can bring to the market. This is the value that you can bring to the market. And for the end users, being it the IT manager, being the IT professional, being HR, this is going to offer them a lot more value and you can differentiate in this kind of way. A quick recap, these are the things that we just, just discussed. You add the value, you are competitive. You don't have to make it a price war anymore, but it becomes a value proposition. And you can grow your business into new areas. Because consulting in a box, as Jan showed COVID, you know, someone coming onto an idle course can see the COVID assessment and say, well, maybe I did need to think about governance or about lean IT or about some other areas. I said the training is more than a certificate alone. Sure, they can still go for the certificate, but now they can actually get the help to make it happen in their workplace. The current level that we have available is the do-it-yourself, which you saw Jan demonstrate. Candidate does it themselves, goes through the assessment, gets the improvement steps, and gets the material. What we're working on, and which we will have later on, is a mentored approach which means that in the six months that the candidate is working with this, let's say a period of six months is usually the scope, um, they can use three hours of online support from a consultant. And I put Quint between brackets because in some cases our partners have their own consultants, so they can use their own consultants. 
where the partner doesn't, they can fall back on a Quinn consultant and hire a Quinn consultant to do support the users. And the step above that will be what we call the coached approach. And uh, there will be two half-day sessions virtual to support a team on the customer side uh, looking to improve and saying, OK, as a team, we need help. So these are the steps that are coming in the future. So you can actually start offering the value to your customers today because, as we said earlier, we launched Consulting in the Box just a little bit over two weeks ago. We've developed things like a marketing kit to help you to build your websites, uh, at least the landing page on your website. On the Consulting in the Box website, there is a page that says Find a Provider. There, we will have country flags, and it is already there, with the names of the partners in those areas offering it, and that is growing. Um, we have the brochures, and we are developing the brochures per target area. So a brochure for the HR manager, for instance, so that when you're talking to an HR manager with your customer, you can give them the explanation of why this is a better training than a training without, or for the procurement manager, spending the money buying the course. So we will have these different ones there as well. Um, feel free to contact us in any which way, and we'll be happy to discuss how you can start offering consulting in a box to your market too and create the value that we've just shown you.